Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are taking another look at Yuzu Emulator and some enormous improvements we have seen in the past day or so. So on the left side of this screen, you can see the old Canary build and on the right, you can see all of these new awesome fixes we now have in Yuzu. So as you can see, we have some very, very significant upgrades to the rendering of shadows in Yuzu Emulator and Super Mario Odyssey. You can however see that there are still some conditional rendering issues, for example with the balloon of the Odyssey, you can see it a lot more clearly in this screenshot mode. So as well as seeing all of these shadow rendering improvements, we have also seen some significant improvements to the rendering of water, especially so in relation to its transparency. As you can see, when we run around this area, we now have correctly fixed transparency on not only the water, but also on all of these icicles. You can see that whereas before, when we were trying to move around this area, you would not be able to see anything that was under the surface of the water. So as well as fixed transparency, we also have fixed reflection and refraction of the ice. You can see when I move my character around, the character model is correctly being refracted in these icicles. Now the easiest place to see these improvements to our transparency rendering is in these large pillars of ice. Previously, instead of being see-through and transparent, they were just giant chunks of rendered greyness. And you could see some of the rendered effects like the wind blowing out of these clouds, but you could not see anything else. As you can now clearly see, these are correctly transparent and working as intended. Another area where we have seen massive render improvements is Lake Kingdom. As you can see, when I switch between screenshot mode and regular gameplay, we are also suffering with the conditional rendering bug for these newly rendered shadows in Super Mario Odyssey. Regardless of this issue, we have seen some fairly significant render improvements in this kingdom, especially as with the previous kingdom, the rendering and transparency of the water. So previously, this kingdom, regardless of the rendering quality of the water, was just a flickering green and red mess, whereas now you can see it is somewhat rendered correctly, even though the colours are completely wrong. We have also seen several other transparency and rendering fixes in other kingdoms. For example, here we are in Sand Kingdom upon first arrival. You can see that all of these ice pillars are also correctly being rendered with full transparency. And in this kingdom, you can also see that the shadows, at least on these palm trees and many of the other game objects are being correctly rendered. Sand Kingdom is in fact one of the kingdoms that has the least amount of instances of the weird conditional rendering which I have previously mentioned. So as well as all of these rendering changes, we have also seen some pretty awesome system-wide changes. For example, we now have been given Amiibo support within Yuzu Emulator itself. When we come to the Emulation tab, Configure, you can now see that we are able to enable NFC. This gives us the ability to scan and use Amiibo bin files. Once you have this enabled, simply come to File, Select the load amiibo option and you then want to navigate to where your amiibo bin files are stored. As you can see, these are all of my bin files. For now, let's just select the drmario.bin file, select open and then once you have your amiibo selected, you simply press right on your d-pad and this will in turn activate your amiibo. As you can see, when we use this Dr. Mario or if we used the Mario suit amiibo, this will give you a temporary invincibility in Super Mario Odyssey as it does itself on the Nintendo Switch. So let's just test the rest of the functionality of amiibos in Super Mario Odyssey. When we come down into this main hub area, we are going to be able to interact with Uncle Amiibo and see exactly how they work. So he is over here, as you can see, he is still suffering with conditional rendering. Let's just drop down and interact with him right now. So unfortunately, at this point in time, we still do not have working or functional text in Super Mario Odyssey, but we can still interact and go through all of these sections. Once you are in this screen, you need to come back to File, you want to select Load Amiibo, and this time let's use a different one. Let's just use the Peach Wedding dot bin. Select it, select Open, and you will see that it has indeed been selected. Pressing right on your D-pad will then select this Amiibo and put it into an interaction state with Uncle Amiibo. 
As with the Nintendo Switch, you are going to have to wait around 4 to 5 minutes for this amiibo to locate anything on your map, but once it does, it does indeed correctly work. So let's just test some of the other amiibos, let's come back to file, select load amiibo and this time let's select the Mario suit.bin instead of the Dr. Mario one. So this should have the exact same effect as the Dr. Mario one, it should give us, and yes you can see it gives us the invincibility for I think it is one minute. Let's select another amiibo, this time let's select the Peach Wedding one, this should give us a full health top up. And yes, there you go, you can see when we use the Peach Wedding amiibo it does indeed give us this health top up. So pretty much all of the other amiibos I have react in basically the same way. The only different one that seems not really to do anything at this point in time is the Bowser suit amiibo, but I'm pretty sure if memory serves me right that it doesn't actually do anything in Super Mario Odyssey on the Nintendo Switch itself. So let's just test some of the other ones. Let's come to file once again. Let's come to load amiibo. And which one will we use? The Super Mario serial one. This should just give us some coins once we use it. And there you go, you can see that it gives us three coins. So as well as these amiibo changes, we have also seen the preliminary introduction of updates which are going to allow us to use all of our DLCs for all of our different games. While at this point in time, some games do work with their DLCs installed on the emulator, quite a few do not. Regardless of this, it's still super awesome to see that the Yuzu development team are working tirelessly to improve this emulator. So now that we've taken a look at Super Mario Odyssey and some system changes, let's take a look at some other games on this emulator and see just how well they are running with these new updates. So first of all, Bayonetta 2 is now running at an almost locked 60fps in the majority of gameplay. Unfortunately at this point in time, due to a core timing issue, the game runs at 2 times speed unless you lock it to 30 frames per second. Unfortunately, if you do this, your game's audio will then run at half speed, meaning that it's not exactly playable audio wise, but it is most definitely playable gameplay wise. You can even see in this very demanding section of the game, we are still maintaining between 58 and 60 frames per second in gameplay. Hopefully they can fix these core timing issues which will make this game very very playable. Staying within the Bayonetta franchise, Bayonetta 1 is now also booting and rendering in Yuzu emulator. Unfortunately at this point in time it does go in game but its render quality is so poor that it is not in any way to be considered playable. Hopefully as with Bayonetta 2 this game will see some significant improvements in the near future. Moving swiftly on, let's take a look at another Nintendo Switch exclusive, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. So while Xenoblade Chronicles 2 has been booting in Yuzu emulator for quite some time now, we have never been able to see anything render in its loading screens or its in-game menus, and as you can see, we are now able to see all of these different prompts in its in-game menu. When we come to the options menu and we come across to the display settings menu, we can in fact see rendered 3D in this game for the very first time on Yuzu emulator. Hopefully in the coming weeks we will see even more improvements that hopefully will allow this title to progress to an in-game or even playable state. Unfortunately at this point in time when you select new game it will simply crash the emulator. Let's move on to our next game, Breath of the Wild. So as you can see, regardless of the fact that we still don't have rendered fonts, Breath of the Wild, at least in its menus, is running quite well in Yuzu emulator at this point in time. Previously, when we would try to load in-game on these screens, we would get anywhere between 1 and 2 frames per second, whereas now we are getting anywhere between 20 and 45. Unfortunately at this point in time, due to the fact that we are still lacking 3D textures in a Yuzu emulator, there is not too much being rendered once we actually get in game. You can move around the camera and see flickers of light sources and some vertex explosion but for the most part there is nothing too much being rendered. In a similar circumstance, when we come to our in-game menu, you are going to see that while yes, we are getting more rendered and you can actually see that this exploded vertex mess here is the actual character model of Link, he is not being correctly rendered at all. 
hopefully in the coming days and weeks, as with all of the other improvements we've seen in today's video, Breath of the Wild will see similar improvement. So that's about it guys for this update video on Yuzu Emulator. If there are any additional games you would like to see me test on this emulator, leave a comment down below and as always, if I have access to that game, I will test it for you absolutely no problem. If any of you guys want to help with the development of this Switch emulator, you will find a link to their Patreon down in the description of this video. As well as that, you will also find a link to the BSOD Gaming Patreon. If you wish to help to support my YouTube channel, you can head on over there and pledge your support. As I always say, you are absolutely in no way obliged to help support my YouTube channel, but every single pledge and donation is massively appreciated and really does help with the day-to-day -day running of the channel. So once again guys, cheers for checking out this video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.